What is happening in Manipur? There are a lot of videos going viral on social media. Two women was forced to walk naked on streets. People are coming to a conclusion saying a lot of politics are included. By now you would have come across all the news channels and social media where two women are walking naked on streets. But where, when, how did it all started? How is the government favoring the public? What are the actions taken? Are they being partial or equal? Let's get started. First of all, the video which is going on viral from past two days was actually captured in the first week of May, which is almost two and a half months ago. Though all these news and viral videos are going viral across social media, but this actually happened a decade ago. You won't believe it. Manipur, one of the state in India which has least population of 30 to 35 lakhs. Manipur is ideally divided as the Kuki and the Methi community. Normally, Kukis live in hill station and Methis live in land surface. Not to forget that though Methis own 60% of the population and live in the land surface which is available in little. Whereas Kukis own 40% of the population and live in hill station which is very vast for them. Since Kukis lived on hill stations and they had very less facilities, they were tagged under ST category. Whereas the Methi community initially refused considering that it was an insult to be tagged under ST category and that they were more established in education and influential since they had majority population. The special reservations for the Kokis community were allowed to buy lands where Mites are living in. Whereas the Mites cannot do it because they were not tagged under ST category and for the fact no cutoffs were provided. Mites were always influential with the local authorities since they had most of the voting rates and mostly all their needs were fulfilled even without ST reservations. Which in turn caused partiality, no wider consultation, no insider-outsider divide. After a certain period of time, the Mites started imposing their traditions on cookies, but cookies never accepted and stood for their recognition. Though the cookies had reservations, they were asked to vacate from certain regions. Since the government claimed it as reserved a forest area, which clearly shows the people lived in hills were not peacefully left. Slowly, the Mites started claiming that the cookies were illegal immigrants and started to protest on and off against them to vacate the whole residence. Cut. Later, the Mites raised the petition to add them under tribal category and they also received a boost from an order of the court. That's when Cookies organized non-violence protest in 10 hill districts, which was suddenly broke as the most violent protest, where the armed force came into picture with the shoot at sight order from the central government. This is when the two women from Cookie came into picture. It's not only about them, it's about a father and a brother as well. Was it only because of the protest? No. This started when a fake news spread across the state on WhatsApp even when the internet was shut down. A particular group of people created a fake news with the picture of a woman wrapped in a plastic bag and thrown on the pedestrian with a caption saying Mite women raped by the cookies. Originally, the picture was taken in Delhi where the parents had killed their own daughter. There was another fake news spread stating that the Mite woman was uh, physically harassed by the cookie tribe. Whereas this incident happened in Rajasthan who was uh, involved in domestic violence by her husband. The most annoying fact is that the local authorities were well aware of it. But none of them took action neither did they try stopping it. When pictures of Delhi incident were spread with fake captions, Mite started acquiring the residents of cookies. They even burned the villages and they were involved in physical violence. That's when a family of four ran into a forest to protect themselves from the outraging protest. The police reportedly said that they were initially rescued from the forest and they were about to take them to the nearest police station. Few kilometers away from the police station, the mobs forcefully took control over the Kuke tribes, killed their father and brother who were trying to save their sister. They were 20 and 40 years old, they were forced to strip their clothes off on the road. They were molested, beaten on bare body and was gang raped by taking turns. That too in the daylight. The police, the local authorities were not able to control it. They couldn't stop any of these incidents. Do you believe that something like this happened in front of local authorities and they couldn't do anything? Why was it not actioned on the same? This particular incident happened on the 4th of May. It's so unbelievable after so many days that too when a video went viral, they are taking action on them. Moreover, the woman filed a complaint and one was arrested. Because of the video went viral, there is no option they had to take action on it. But do you know that 30 year old woman was gang raped and was murdered on the same? And many such incidents take place and none of them talk about it nor raise the incident. The victims are remained to be victims, whereas the ones do such inhuman act are left free to do on the same. It's unimaginable, it's so disgusting to even think in which world we are living in. Nowadays humans are scared of humans, scared of discrimination, scared of inequality.